my name is Dawn Matthews and welcome to this lesson on computer hardware maintenance. But before we start, Archie, what do you understand by the word maintenance? Maintenance is when you keep something in good condition. Very good. But how do you keep something in very good condition? Well, I suppose you have to keep it clean, check it regularly and fix it when it's broken. So computer maintenance is all about the basic care of computers. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to perform basic computer maintenance. Computer maintenance is fine, but our teacher at school is always shouting at us, don't take food into the computer room, don't drink over the keyboard. I mean, she's so strict. Well, but she's absolutely right, Archie. You should never eat or drink near a computer. But why not? I'm careful. Well, no matter how careful you are, there's always the chance that you will spill your drink or drop your food on one of the computer components, and that would cause a problem for the computer. How bad could it be? You just clean up the mess and everything will be fine. Well, not really, Archie. What happens if you spill a cold drink on the floor? You um, wipe it up. Okay, that will get rid of the liquid. But what happens if you stand in the spot where the cold drink was spilled? Mm, it'll probably be sticky. Correct. So, do you think your computer will work well if it's full of sticky cold drink? Um, maybe. <laughs> no, it won't. And to prove it, I'm going to do something that I really shouldn't do. Mm, I like the sound of this. I'm going to pour this cold drink over an old keyboard. Then you'll see how bad it is to make a mess on your computer. But just remember, don't try this at home because what I'm about to do will ruin any keyboard. Okay, here we go. It's awful doing this. Now what? We wait for it to dry and then we'll see. Look, the keys are all sticky. In fact, most of them aren't working at all. Now let's open this keyboard up and see the damage caused by the cold drink. Okay, just undo this screw. That should do it. Thank you, Archie. Mm, now that is gross. <laughs> yes, it is. And look at all these crumbs. Someone has been eating over this keyboard as well. So, now you can see how dirt gets under the keys and damages the keyboard. Yeah, I won't complain about not eating in the computer room again. <laughs> Good. Now, aside from food and drink, the keys of a keyboard do get quite dirty. Sometimes the dirt comes off your fingers when you type, sometimes fluff comes off your clothes, and sometimes dust and tiny bits of dirt fall out of the air and land between the keys. To maintain your keyboard properly, you should clean out all this grime every now and then. Do you have any ideas about how to clean a keyboard? Um, how about using a cloth with soap and water? <laughs> no, you should never use soap or water to clean electronic equipment. This is what you will need to clean a keyboard properly. A lint-free cloth, like these. A dry cloth or duster. A suitable cleaning fluid like isopropyl alcohol. This can be bought from any computer shop. Cotton buds. A can of compressed air and a flat tip screwdriver, although this is only needed for a very thorough clean. Now, to clean the keyboard, you must make sure the PC is shut down. Never do any maintenance on a computer while it's on. Once the PC has been shut down, you can unplug the keyboard and turn it upside down. And then gently tilt it from side to side and shake it gently. You'll see that some of the bits and pieces which were caught in the keys will fall out. And look at that. Now let's clean the keys. First take an earbud and put some of the cleaning liquid onto the bud. And run it gently along some of the keys. Make sure you get into or in between all the keys, Archie. You could buy special cleaning liquid from a computer store. The cleaning liquid should have no traces of ammonia because this will cause permanent damage. After cleaning the keys with a cotton bud, take your lint-free cloth and dampen it with a liquid cleaning liquid. There you go. Give the surface of the keyboard a good wipe and use the cloth to get into the curve of the keys. Remember, never pour the cleaning liquid directly onto the keyboard. Always apply it using a cloth or a cotton bud. When you're finished, give the keyboard a wipe with a dry cloth or a duster. Here you go. 
You should now have a nice clean keyboard. Thank you, Archie. Hmm. Is that it? Well, if you really want to clean out your keyboard, you have to remove all the keys. But be warned, it's not a good idea to remove the keys of your keyboard if you don't know how to put them back in the right location. Also, don't unscrew the keys if you don't have enough time to complete the job. Removing the keys is very time consuming as each key needs to be unscrewed, cleaned and then reinserted. Okay, now I know how to clean a keyboard. Now can I clean the cool drink out of the keyboard that you ruined earlier? <laughs> Only if you want to. But you will find that a keyboard is never quite the same after you've spilled cold drink on it. It's probably easier just to buy a new one. So make sure you don't spill cold drink or anything else on your keyboard. Okay, I hear you. Now let's look at how to clean your mouse. Remember, always unplug your mouse before you clean it. Now check what kind of mouse you have. To do this, turn the mouse upside down. Do you see this particular mouse has a ball that rolls around built into the bottom. This is called a rollerball mouse. You will only be able to clean a rollerball type mouse at home. Any other kind of mouse will have to be sent to a professional for maintenance. So if you do have a rollerball mouse, turn it upside down like I've done and look for this small circular panel holding the ball in place. This panel can be removed like this. As you can see, there are little arrows, so just push back in the direction the arrows point and it will click off. There you go. Take the ball out of the mouse and put it to the side. If you will hold on to that, Archie, thank you. Now, when you look inside the mouse, you will see a lot of dust and dirt have collected on the rollers. This dirt can interfere with the way the mouse moves and must be cleaned off. To do this, pour some special cleaning liquid onto an earbud like this, then gently scrape the dirt off the rollers, there you go. Take care not to damage these little rollers because they are essential in telling the computer about the movement of the mouse. When you're sure that the ball and the rollers are free of dirt and dust, reinsert the ball into the mouse, then put the panel back into place. Hey, that was fun. What's next? Well, let's take a look at monitors. And Archie, can you do me a favor, please, and put mm. the monitor on the table while I clear this? Oh, sure. Thank you. Let's take that. Thank you very much. Right. This is probably the component of your computer which gets dirtiest the quickest. It's surprising how many people forget to clean their monitors. I mean, you spend most of the time at your computer staring at the screen. You should notice the dirt and monitors do get very dirty. Dust accumulates more quickly on the surface of a monitor than anywhere else because of the static charge created by the screen. This static electricity attracts dust particles and makes them stick to the screen. Greasy fingerprints and other smudges also appear on the screen as if by magic. In most cases, the best way to clean the screen is to wipe it with a soft cloth. Be very careful about using additional cleaning products. Using the wrong cleaner can damage the special coatings used on many newer screens. And never, ever use any abrasive cleaners as they will damage your monitor. Just take a very slightly damp, soft cloth and wipe gently. That's the safest way to clean a screen. And Archie, will you be so kind and do it for me? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's look at a few general tips on maintaining a computer. Always remember, a computer's greatest enemy is heat. Heat causes the internal components inside your computer to wear out. Heat also lowers the general performance of computers. To prevent heat from damaging your computer, the first thing to check is the ventilation. Ventilation is when air moves around freely, keeping things cool. So, if you're sitting in a room and a strong breeze is blowing through the window, then you could say the room was well ventilated. A computer also needs air to keep cool. Inside the computer case, there are a number of fans that help keep the computer cool by pushing air around. It's very important that there is a hole in the back of the computer case so that the main cooling fan can pull air into the case. There should be at least 10 centimeters of space between the back of the case and the wall. This space must not be blocked in any way so that the air can flow freely. 
Now, let's look at the monitor. Do you see these slots on top of the monitor? These slots let hot air escape from the monitor. If you block them with books, boxes or paper, the monitor will overheat. Like with a computer case, heat can also damage the monitor. Overheating can make the monitor flicker and could even cause general failure. Always keep the top and back of the monitor clean and free from clutter. You got that, Archie? Mm. Good. So, let's move on. Next, we will look at the maintenance of stiffy disks. You must always be careful with these disks because if you damage them, you could lose your valuable information. Here are a few points to keep in mind when working with stiffy disks. Never leave your disk in the sun. The heat will warp the disk and damage your information. Never allow water near your disk. Water will damage sectors and tracks and can make your disk unusable. Never put your disk near a magnet. A magnetic field could destroy the information on the disk. Never bend, throw or hit the disk in any way. Never write on the disk with a sharp object. Always use a felt tip pen to label your disks. And when using a label, try to write on the label before sticking the label onto the disk. The last thing we should talk about is looking after your hard drive. Your hard drive is a very important part of your computer because it stores all your information. If the hard drive is damaged, you could lose your precious data forever. You even get something called a hard drive crash. Sure, that sounds serious. Well, Archie, it is very serious. You usually can't get any information back after your hard drive crashes. So, how do you stop the crash from happening? Do you remember something called the read-write hit? Oh, yeah. They are the things that write information onto the hard drive and read information off the hard drive and they float just above the platters of the hard drive. Very good, Archie. But because the read-write heads float just above the platters, any jolt or sudden movement can cause the heads to touch the platter. If this happens, the read-write head will grind into the fast-spinning platters and permanently damage the drive. So, it's never a good idea to move or bump the case when the computer is on. This could cause the hard disk to move around and cause damage to itself. If you want to move the computer, always shut down first. When you shut down a computer, the read-write heads are pulled far back from the platters, making it safe to move. Now for your task. Draw up a list of do's and don'ts on how to take care of a computer. Display this list in your computer center. I hope that you have enjoyed this series of lessons. Don't forget, for more information, you can go to our website. And Archie, thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure. <laughs> Till next time, goodbye.